Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is not going to be like any other video I've ever made on this channel before. I have discovered a way to generate art which can be used to generate NFT collections and eventually sell an NFT collection yourself for free or for very, very little money on the Polygon network. But that will be in future videos. In this video, I want to show you this art engine that a person called Hashlips created. All credit where credit is due. This thing is insanely powerful. You don't even need Photoshop or anything. All of this in this video I'm going to show you is open source. You don't need to pay for anything. And you can create a collection of up to 10,000 NFTs for free. And this can probably be used for print on demand as well if you guys can put the pieces together and let me know how you would use this for print on demand in the comments. I will also make a video on that. I am not a programmer. This does require some kind of understanding of programming, but I am going to show you exactly how to do it even if you don't understand programming because I am not a programmer myself. I do know the basics, but yeah. I think anyone can understand the basics pretty easily. So what actually is this? This tool takes layers. On the left you can see layers and on the right you can see automatically unique generated content. Every single one will be guaranteed to be unique. Which is why this thing is so powerful. And definitely, guys, if you know how to use this for print on demand, please let me know. So how does this actually work? It uses this uh, GitHub here. So first of all, just go to hashlips.online and click on this image. It will take you to the GitHub of the uh, art engine. And then you just want to click download zip here. I have already downloaded it. You then want to go on Google and type in Visual Studio Code. This is an absolutely necessary tool to do this process. You want to click download download this and then when it gives you an option to say open um, in code make sure you click that as a tick it's a setting on the install once you've got it you just want to extract all here and then you want to right click it and you want to click open with code if there's no option that says open with code then you can also just go to file here in visual studio code Press open folder and then just open the folder like that. That's also fine to do. Okay, so what are we looking at here? This, let me just say now, you don't have to understand everything in this file. I certainly do not understand everything in this file. This file is very specific for making NFTs. Okay, it even will give you metadata, which allows you to set rarity and give objects to your NFTs. But I'm just going to show you the very, very basics of how to actually get this thing running. I'm going to use the example, which if I go to layers here and I open bottom lid, for example, you can see that there are example layers here already. All you really have to do to get this to go is change the layers and just make it so it runs. So one of the problems with these uh, projects is often it... If, if there's a problem, you are probably missing some kind of dependency. A dependency is a script or a piece of code or whatever it might be, which allows the program to run. Okay. So if you ever get an error, try and look on Google, write the error on Google and type in something like dependency or package after the error. And you will probably find that you're just missing a dependency, which you need to install. So let's talk about how we actually find out everything we need to do. Okay, so this is the README on GitHub. If you scroll under where you downloaded from, you will see the README. And the first thing you need to do is yarn install. And probably you will get an error when you do this because you are missing something at the beginning of the project. This is what confuses me. This is what confuses other people. This is often the problem. So all you want to do is you want to go on terminal on Visual Studio Code and press new terminal. And then we're just going to straight away try yarn install and see if it works. If it doesn't work for you, yep, it doesn't work for me as you can see because probably I am missing um, something. 
Okay, so I've just gone on the yarn website and it's telling me to do npm install global yarn. So we'll try that instead. This is probably not going to work either. Oh, it seems to be working actually. Okay. Okay, so that's yarn installed, I think. So now we'll do yarn version just to check. Okay, it doesn't seem to be installed. Okay, I'm just going to try npm install just to, yeah. So this is one of the problems. People do not explain this properly, okay. I'm missing whatever it is for npm. Okay, so when Hashlips says do yarn install or this says do npm install, I don't even have this installed. This is why it's so confusing. This is why I get so frustrated with these programmers because they just assume that you're like, pretty on it and you understand this but I I don't I didn't understand this for ages so now I'm gonna try it npm install now that I've installed npm that seemed to have worked and then we'll try to do yarn version still not working running scripts is disabled on the system for more information okay I need to I need to allow scripts on my system. Okay, so all I had to do was do set execution policy bypass scope current user force in the uh, in the thing. This will be different for your system. That's why I'm not going to leave anything in the description. Everything is specific to your system. If you get an error, then just read the error and then Google it. That's all I did. So I just Googled this error and then I found that you can change the... Um, the security of the file just by running this in the command line and then I did yarn version and you can see now that this says yarn version 1.2217 so now that I know that yarn is actually installed I'm just gonna very quickly do yarn install just to make sure okay again I had to do yarn install this is what I'm talking about guys it's so confusing nobody ever explains this kind of stuff just if there's an error, the error will be that you are missing something. NPM install is always a good one to do at the beginning of any project as well. Okay, so now according to Hashlips, it should just work. So you, you have to like decide all of your different um, all of the different variables, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is not something I'm gonna go into in this video. I just want to show you how to get it running. But basically, this is the order that it has to be in this order is uh, I think it's in yeah it's in SRC config so if you click SRC here and then config here this order has to be the same as the order of the layers um, in your layers folder and you can choose how many are generated if you scroll down it says number of images let's say I change this to 20 um, and it will also it will always make sure that there are no repeats so it this should work if I have all of the dependencies now all I have to do is just run the um, run the script so I'm just gonna do npm run build this probably isn't going to work because I'm probably missing something else I guess but we'll see oh it, <laughs> it actually worked nice oh I forgot to say Okay, so as you can see, the tool has automatically created these images. There are five images. They are all unique. I did ask it to make more than five, but for some reason it just didn't, which is kind of weird. Uh, I think it's because there's not enough unique um, layers, so it won't create them. If you're creating an NFT specifically, you will also have the metadata of each of those, which, can, which is in a JSON format which can be used to easily uh, upload to a smart contract, which I will show you how to do in a future video if people want to see it. This is a three-step process. First, you uh, generate an NFT collection using layers. The second one is you create a smart contract. Third one is you upload or create a minting. Okay, if this doesn't mean anything to you, then don't worry too much, but I assume this does if you're watching this video this far in, then you know something about NFTs. I have now learned how to do this first process. I'm very, very satisfied with that. It took me a week and 
that's fine. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Um, I used GIMP uh, or this tool here, um, which is a free version of Photoshop's open source and it's very, very powerful. And yeah, that's what I am making. I still have to make my own NFT collection. I'm probably just gonna go for like 800 just for now because I need to start working on the second stage. And this particular system that uh, was created by Hashlips, he also explains how to do these two stages as well. So if you guys want more videos on how to do these two steps, which are friendly for non-programmers, please let me know. And if you run into any errors, just make sure you Google the error and try and find what you haven't installed. And this works. So I hope this helps and I hope that you guys can get it to work too. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you really soon with some more content. Peace.